this recording was uh, deleted by mistake so i will redo it uh, chapter number two the thinking behind customer relationships that lead to good experience the thinking behind so here you would want to reflect what is the thinking behind or what should be the thinking behind when you want to improve customer relationships when you want to uh, ensure that they will get the best experience possible what should be the uh, thinking behind all of all of that what should be the mindset uh, how you should approach the customer uh, what are the things you need to do and also what are the things which you should uh, stay away from uh, all of those things we would like to uh, speak um, uh, speak uh, speak on um, so the mindset uh, how the mindset should be um, all of those things would be part of this chapter so essentially i would like you to think behind uh, how you should be uh, how you should be uh, going about all of this business uh, of providing um, good uh, customer service uh, quality service um, and so on um, the companies uh, you would have to change your philosophy you would have to change your culture you would have to change your metrics uh, key performance indicators and so on and even your organizational structure um, if you have to uh, and why you would want to do that uh, you would want to do that because you want to ensure that the customer is uh, at the forefront the customer is the is the focus and uh, this is what happens you know uh, you can broadly distinguish between two ideas uh, so first idea can be that um, you have a business and uh, you want you have some products you have some services and you want to sell them and uh, you want to ensure that you maximize your profit uh, your gains um, and uh, you are doing all the things which will help you to increase your sales so your focus is on increasing your sales that can be the first first idea second idea can be that instead of just focusing on your sales and focusing about your own business uh, and what you have to offer you start focusing on your on your customer uh, what is it that your customer want what do they require how to please them how to satisfy them and not just satisfy them how to uh, how to exceed their expectations uh, that type of thinking can be also also there. So uh, you would you would think that nothing is wrong in thinking about increasing your sales also, uh, um, and that is fine. Also, many businesses are more focused on that, but uh, the best thinking might be that. If you want to increase uh, uh, the satisfaction from your customers' relationships, if you want to give them the best experience possible, maybe the thinking behind should be that your your customer is the primary focus of whatever uh, you are doing, uh, be it the culture of the company, be it how you analyze, how you are performing your metrics your organizational structure what type of policies you have in place even once you have completed your your sales how you are going about that after sales service for example uh, so is it that once you have made the sales you you are done with the customer or you are still uh, thinking about the customer that how you can um, help the customer enjoy your service to the best of your ability or to the best of customers expectations and so on so that is what you would want to think about 
uh, becoming customer centric you know that is essentially if you want to ensure that the customer gets the best experience possible whatever you are doing you would want to ensure that uh, your all of your efforts are customer centric customer uh, focused uh, three things uh, are true about a company's customer uh, customers are there are not many customers uh, out 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 there uh, if you think think about it for all but those companies in real financial trouble uh, customers are even uh, not many than than capital itself so even if a company is in deep financial troubles difficult situation even in those times uh, some people suggest that it is easier to find maybe capital but to find loyal customers who will stick with your product or service because of your performance or because of something you did or their emotional attachment whatever you want to call them those type of customers are there are not many customers out there if you want to ensure that uh, you have a decent amount of customers who are loyal and who are there for you customers are the sole source of all a company company's revenue this is very interesting line and uh, apparently it, it might not look very correct also uh, because there are many revenue streams which a company can have and generate you know uh, funds from from there but you, if look if you look deeply you would realize that uh, everything is linked with 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 customers if there were no customers then uh, none of those other income streams which you might be thinking about they were not possible so this maybe should be the mindset that the customers are extremely important because they are they are the sole source of uh, all a company's income uh, customers create value in in two ways and this concept is is very interesting uh you must have heard of roi return on investment uh, but another interesting uh, concept is return on customer roc uh, they don't know, don't measure and don't manage what is happening to underlying customer equity while the current members are falling uh, into into place um, roi you must be familiar with that how much value does your company create for the money it uses um, so for example weekend university uh, they can easily create return on investment how much money they are uh, they are they are putting in in the in the system in terms of infrastructure in terms of lecturers and administrative uh, fees and all of those things uh, and then how much money is coming out in terms of student fees and so on so that would be return on investment for them but many times companies organizations service providers they are not maybe thinking as much as they should be about return on uh, return on customer return from consumers uh, how much value does your company create for the customer it has and it can be also very difficult because you would want to understand that what is it that uh, the the customer value you would want to spend time in understanding about the customers what do customers really really want what do they value and then you would want to give them what they value uh, and then you know follow up surveys and finding about that what is the real value uh, your company is creating for the customers uh, so return on return on uh, customer return 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 on consumers uh, that is very interesting concept to to reflect on customer information provides a very powerful competitive uh, advantage and if you think about it it's all about customer information many companies are you know uh, are running because of the data they have collected about their consumers customers uh, over a period of time uh, it gives them the insight about customers requirement needs wants uh, all of those things 
so customer data, customer information is very important. Uh, you should and how you how you put it in the database that is also very important how you use it to your advantage that is very important but there are many issues along along the side for example data protection data security uh, customer knows that uh, how you will be using your data you will be or will not be sharing it with the third party all of those things and then why should customer give you their information? Uh, they would not just casually give you their information just like that. Uh, they have to trust you with the information they would want to give to you. So you would want to think that how to build that trust, uh, which will help them, enable them to share their data with, with you. That is, again, very interesting uh, part. John Dremond, a uh, very interesting author read about his work uh, at McKinsey Quarterly, uh, very interesting uh, journal. Uh, please see if you can um, start reading these type of journals and so on from the reference list, depending on which articles uh, you like and which articles uh, you would want, which type of information you would want to um, gain some more insight uh, into. Characteristics of a gen, genuine business relationship would like to spend some time on that. Uh, what should be some of the characteristics? For example, interactive. If the relationship is not interactive, the customer consumer is not giving sharing insight with you, then maybe it is it is not uh, it is not as it is not uh, it is not a relationship in terms of how we want to understand relationships in service uh, management, quality service management. Uh, this can be very challenging, requires a change in behavior from both parties, from the, from the giver and from the taker, uh, from the business service provider and the um, person who is enjoying the, the service. Um, can be very, very difficult many times. And this one also requires and produces trust. If trust is not there uh, and it does not produce trust, the things you are doing as service provider, if it does not produce, produce trust, then again, it can be very problematic in terms of having genuine business uh, relationship. And that is what this chapter uh, is is all about the thinking behind customer relationships that lead to good experience because uh, customers can have different type of experiences and they, they are not going to be good all the time so what should be the mindset that will help uh, in for customers to have good experience and build good relationships so these things you would want to keep in mind the trust is, of course, uh, very important and changing your behavior all the time. And both of these are very difficult. Uh, and why I said changing your behavior all the time, of course, it is not all the time, uh, literally speaking. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that the requirements of customers, many times they change uh, in different circumstances, what is ha happening in the external environment. Um, and customers, their habits, their preference uh, sometimes change. Their liking, disliking over a period of time change. You would want to think about all of these things. And the earlier line which we were reflecting on that you would want to reflect on your culture, your organizational structure, all of those things. You are trying to ensure that whatever you do, it is, it is pleasing to the customer at the end of the day trust is a quality worth a book all by itself that is the importance of trust um, and if you are interested in reading more about uh, trust um, this this is the professor who taught me trust uh, uh, when i was overseas in in uk um, yes maybe this website trust pathway so Maybe you would want to go on uh, YouTube and uh, check uh, if he has something there which you can benefit from. For example, this um, 
human resource and and trust uh, it's a short clip uh, 10 minute long 11 minute long I spend some time in in understanding what is the link of uh, human resource uh, and uh, how to build trust there uh, can be very useful because it is it is people who are uh, you have to find the right people for the right job uh, if you don't have that then it can be it can be problem uh, remember in the first chapter we were you guys one of you guys mentioned that when we had a problem in some service situation one of the one of the friends suggested that maybe that's that service rep did not want to be there that's very interesting maybe it is just that they did not want to be there uh, so you want to ensure that people want to be where where they are uh, that is that is very important that want um, to be there uh, how trust works it's a short clip six minute clip spend some time in learning about these things um, i really enjoyed his lectures and all of the things he had to state, say about trust and so on so but um, but if not this you can find any other uh, people who you uh, like and admire and uh, the idea is essentially to read as much as you can about trust and how to build trust how to repair trust if trust is broken every now and then things will happen and you might do something as service provider uh, where uh, trust is broken uh, for the customer uh, there are ways to mend that trust back how to uh, go about uh, those things uh, journal of academy of marketing science again a very interesting journal uh, to look at uh, at the extreme uh, by the harley davidson customers who tattoos the the company's brand on his bicep this is very interesting how the how the consumers of harley davidson uh, relate with the they would they would even make tattoos of their company's brand on their biceps why they would want to want to do that what type of brand is is harley davidson you might want to do some uh, research on uh, on that that why their customers are such who would uh, who would uh, who would want to make tattoos uh on their on their bodies that is quite quite an extreme uh, behavior if you uh, think uh, about uh, about 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 them yeah if you if you do some search you will you will find that uh, you will find that the there is a there is a characteristic in in the consumers of harley davidson that they are kind of kind of rebels uh they don't go with the with the norm if you look at their dressing and so on so so maybe that is one of the things which make them um, do these take this type of behavior um, So think about uh, these type of examples and these type of things. Uh, in this following section, James Barnes, a very different view of customer relationship. You might want to go through that. He has his own take on customer relationship. Uh, you might learn a thing or two. And it does not matter that, you know, if you don't agree with some of the things he's saying, it doesn't really matter. You are just exposing yourself of different thought processes processes it must understand the psychology that underlines the establishment of relationship in journal uh, that is very understand so as a service provider if you want to give quality service one of the things which you would really want to master or learn as much as possible is psychology uh, human behavior how people behave in different type of uh, situations uh, what is the psyche uh, the more you learn about that the better you will be able to 
satisfy your customers even when they are complaining you would be able to understand what what are the underlying causes of those behaviors and uh, so on customer retention is not the same as a customer relationship so don't get confused that if you are able to retain the customer it also means that you have a good customer relationship also uh, it is not true all the all the time uh, customer retention uh, you might be able to retain customer for many other reasons reasons for example maybe uh they it is the proximity your location uh, it is easy to come to you uh, all those things can impact or the customer is in a rush and their favorite place is maybe far away so they come to you for those reasons so uh, these are different things retention and customer relationship uh, but if you have good customer relationship of course you will be able to uh, retain your customer you might think that but then again you might have good relationship but uh, because the customer it's not easy, easy for them to come in that time and space to you uh, they are not as much as much frequently coming as they might have if those issues were not there retention is behavioral loyalty relationships imply the existence of emotional loyalty this is very interesting concept you are if it's by because of the behavior uh, it is a it is a it is it is just their behavior that uh, if they if you are able to retain them maybe it is it is just the the behavior of the customer of the client so they are coming again and again uh, to you but if you have a good relationship uh, or if you want to ensure that you have good customer relationship then there has to be some type of emotional loyalty with the brand only then you can have a good relationship and remember the characteristics of relationship we just uh, briefly scanned through a while a while ago uh, it is it is possible for a company to develop a high level of behavioral loyalty among its customers while having relatively little emotional loyalty there it's a possibility that the customer is not emotionally loyal, but it is just their habit and uh, their behavior to get your get your service or buy your service. For example, many customers will buy a large percentage of their groceries from a supermarket that is close uh, to their home. They shop there every week and they have been doing so for years. When asked why they are loyal, customers will point to factors such as Convenience of location, 24 hours opening, large parking lots, speedy checkouts, one-stop shopping, and so on. All of these reasons relate to functional factors that drive repeat behavior. So it is behavioral loyalty. If these factors, which we just mentioned, 24-hour opening and speedy checkouts and on-stop shopping and convenience of location, maybe or similar type of uh, factors were not there, then maybe they would not be uh, uh, they would not be coming to that that place. Uh, functional loyalty, uh, behavioral loyalty. Uh, this form of loyalty, therefore, is extremely vulnerable. As soon as they see a better deal or more convenience elsewhere, they are gone. Uh, contrast this with other customers who shop 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 regu regularly. Uh, that would be emotional loyalty when these customers move to a new location they seek out a branch of their supermarket their supermarket because they are emotionally loyal with with their uh, with the brand so let's say you are emotionally loyal to hilo and you are a frequent customer there and you go there no matter no matter what you like the you are you are emotionally linked uh, with their service for some reason maybe you know the customer reps there maybe they know you personally maybe the type they greet the way they greet you you like to be there not just to buy your products uh, or to some other parish or some other 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 place you would still want to see where is the closest high low because of your emotional uh, connection uh, which they were able to build because of uh, 
the way they treated you, the way they built the relationship, um, increasing your trust in their services, um, good communication when you have any problem solving that problem. Uh, and most importantly, you don't get the feeling that they are just doing business with you. It is more than business. It is it is some type of personal uh, relationship you have uh, created with them or they were able to create with you because of the information uh, they have about about you. A company must genuinely care about its customer. For a customer relationship strategy strategy to work, a company must establish a focus on the customer, a, com a commitment to a genuine understanding of the customer and a culture in which every employee, every employee believes that the customer comes first. And these are very easy to say, uh, say out here, but uh, to practically do these things, it can be quite challenging and time consuming. And if you are not really passionate about your job, about your work, uh, if there is, if you don't enjoy a higher purpose, uh, from your from your job, not just the salary and the perks and privileges you are getting. If you if that if you don't really want to satisfy the customer for the sake of just getting pleasure from that satisfaction, which you see on the face or in the words of the customer, then it can be very very hard. And this is very very important. Every employee every employee has to be, has to be on on board. Uh, you have seen many examples where there is an organization and good people work there who care about the customers, but somewhere along the line, there is some worker who is not really interested in pleasing the customer and that can sabotage the whole experience. It is about the whole experience. It is not just one thing. Everything has to combine together for a business to give the good service, good experience to the to the customer. The company needs to have a customer strategy, one focused on ensuring that everything the company does is oriented towards building solid customer relationships. Everything the company does, everything. So the focus is on satisfying, pleasing customer and not just making a sales. If that mindset, that thinking is behind customer relationship uh, that is going to maybe assist you in, uh, in 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 ensuring that the customer uh, can have a good uh, really experience uh, employees engage in conversation with you and go out of their way to help you find the things you you need uh, so that those type of activities are going to build trust such companies create value beyond price if a company is doing these type of things, then the value you are deriving uh, from uh, that service is is beyond price uh, and they might be able to charge whatever they feel fit over a period of time and it will be um, it will not be it might not be very easy for you to switch because that company really understands you and delivers the services the way you want and you can always switch yes but for the other company uh, it will take time for them to understand you and uh, it is a long process and will they be as willing as the first company to really understand you uh, maybe maybe yes maybe not uh, in fact they are able to earn the prices they charge precisely because of the additional emotional value uh, they provide so emotional connection is quite interesting in the in the service um, uh, services people customers are going to enjoy. You don't go back to your favorite businesses only because they have the lowest price. You get go back primarily because of how uh, you are treated. Uh, you might go for the price also, but treated how you feel when you go at some service provider, those are some things which cannot be taken very lightly or ignored. Uh, very important that how the how the service treat the customers. 
uh, but such attempts to build customer relationship are not based on strategy to create an emotional connection but rather see relationships from the perspective of the company and the benefits that it will derive from increased frequency uh, of of purchase so uh, over a period of time if the customer is satisfied of course they are going to uh, um, try that they can increase the frequency of visits or increase the frequency of how they use your services over a period of time and that can automatically result in increased uh, increased sales increased revenues but again your your emphasis should be on pleasing the customer what customer really wants taking out time to really understand the customer uh, without patience and uh, planning and uh, proper infrastructure and all the employees on board uh, and also the leadership because it sometimes it can be expensive to um, do all those things so they need to also understand the importance of all this uh, they should be excited about return on customer also not just return on investment uh, but many simply don't understand their customers and that is maybe the the biggest uh, problem if not biggest one of the big problems that uh, service providers don't do not take out the time uh, to really understand their customer consumers so they can give them individualized attention and then all customers are not equal you have to think about that also uh, and to give so much um, uh, individualized uh, service to uh, to customers that is is expensive so you need to first understand which customers to give what type of service and all of this understanding takes time and you make some mistakes and then you learn from your mistakes and it's a, it's a, it's not it's not something which can be done very quickly and very easily uh, there are very many bumps in the in the road so your enthusiasm about your job, how much you are excited about your job, how much you are willing to give uh, in terms of understanding your customer uh, properly, that genuine interest, uh, intrinsic interest uh, in understanding your customer consumer so you can give them what they really want. Without those things, it is maybe just not, just not possible. Uh, understanding the complexities of consumer behavior requires deep thinking application of principles from psychology and other human sciences uh, so please think about that there is a framework five ease of customer relationships customer environment of course very very important important uh, out there customer expectations for example meeting customers expectations is obviously important but is not sufficient to may move customers towards the establishment of genuine relationships uh, it is it is important but it it is possible that it is not sufficient you expect something you uh, uh, you your customer expects something you give them what they are ex expecting yes you did a good job right but that is it's not necessary that it is going to create a genuine relationship uh, uh, here is a very interesting um, uh, ideas on this page so I would like to uh, go through uh, with 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 you research has shown that customers have considerable difficulty verbalizing what they expect from the companies uh, with which they deal uh, experiences that customer expectations are for the most part largely predictable and bounded by the customer's experience in dealing with similar companies or brands. For example, if we were to ask a customer who is planning to a business trip to Chicago, which she expects of the what she expects of the airline that will be taking her there, uh, what would she expect? She would expect that she is able to buy her ticket online. She is able to check it uh, from her check in from from her office. Uh, ability to check her suitcase effectively 
um, the flight depart and arrive on time she find the suitcase is when she lands when she when she reaches the destination all of these things are expectations so uh, if if uh, a comp uh, an airline is de meeting these these expectations uh, uh, these are obviously important but it is not sufficient that the customer will uh, will move to ha having a good genuine relationship with the with the company on the other hand if the same customer was sitting in the lobby and she was maybe charging her phone or something something like that and you can read this uh, for that the highlighted section uh, and she forgets her charger or phone in the lobby and goes in the uh, in the uh, in the in the aeroplane and the staff is out there and they uh, they look they are looking uh, if anyone has left anything or something like that because every every uh, airline has a little little portion outside uh, uh, as people are uh, getting on board uh, before that if people are early they can sit out out there so uh, the company is looking in if if they have a designated space for them then the the staff should be looking at if someone has forgotten anything or not and then they find some charger or some phone or something like that and they make an attempt to find who it belongs to and then uh, give it to them now this is something which maybe the customer did not really expect uh, so if a company do something like that then uh, you are doing something which can help uh, in building a genuine relationship because you showed that you care and you showed that you go you don't just do what you are required or expected to do you look out for other other things also in the interest of uh, your customer consumer uh, so the satisfaction does not make our relationship. Uh, other research indicates that even the most satisfied customer remain receptive to competitive offers and are prone to defect. A customer relationship that has achieved only satisfaction is vulnerable. Uh, you are satisfied, this is a satisfied relationship. Then, but when some new offers, more interesting offers are going to come from competition, uh, you might want to try that because uh, customer is always looking for uh, the best, the most uh, they can get from uh, their money uh, spent. So these are something uh, which, which, uh, which, um, and here is the iPhone charger phone thing which I was just telling you that if they if they forgot how. Uh, what would happen to the relationship if the airline can uh, find it for them and give it give it to them that if these type of things become the basis for storytelling and you know the ones that begins with you will you will you will never believe these are the stories which we tell our friends family you will never believe what happened to me yesterday what happened to me on the flight or what happened with me on the road so these are something which those stories are something which was is beyond uh, like the normal expected type of behaviors. Some companies have gone uh, out of their way to help and assist the customer consumer and then the consumer customers always remember that. For the company's perspective, it is as important to understand what customers are not expecting as it is to know what they are expecting. Ultimately, customers are not expecting to be surprised because think about all the things which which were there, like the ability to buy a ticket online, check check in uh, from the office, uh, the flight is on time, uh, departs on time, ability to check in the luggage easily, find the luggage easily when when the person lands. Uh, they are not expecting to be surprised all the time. Creating customer surprise by doing the unexpected is an important part of building genuine emotion based customer relationships. So sometimes you would want to think about that. Uh, but be mindful that not all customers also like 
to be surprised. It depends on the type and the quality and the timing of the surprised or surprised also. Nothing focuses the mind like surprise. Uh, companies would play plan to surprise and delight their customers more often to deliver story worthy customer uh, customer experience and uh, uh, please think in your heads what what is there any uh, story experience which is uh, like some story worthy customer experience you had uh, what would be what would be what would be that and I made a note I will share one story with you so here it is I went to Germany a couple of years ago um, I landed on the airport took the train reached to the city where I wanted to go uh, it was related with uh, teaching and learning and conference um, at, at, a, at a university in Germany so uh, I, re I I'm at the train in the city where I wanted to go and I had not booked any hotel any place to um, uh, stay because of uh, some things like you know I was not sure when when I would be reaching there and there were some other issues also so far that I just did not uh, uh, plan ahead um, I should have but I did not and then uh, I am in the city and I um, check for hotels on the on my on the on the internet and I found a couple of hotels nearby and I go there and I'm walking in the city center everything was close by walking distance so uh, I had my luggage with me also and I just walk and reach to a nice beautiful hotel and I enter and the uh, customer service uh, greets me and I ask for a room and they say we don't have a room uh, available sorry uh, and that is it that is what I was expecting I come to the uh, customer service I ask them if you have a room or not and if they have they will check me and if they don't have they will apologize or whatever and I will look for another one but the conversation did not stop here uh, the gentleman told me that we don't have a have a have a room and I said okay no problem so he asked me some other although he was busy he was not it is not that he was just not busy he was busy apparently uh, and then uh, he asked me that um, and then there were other people also he was uh, dealing with every now and then uh, so he he asked me if um, he asked me um, it seems that you have not booked your um, accommodation and you seem like some tourist and I said yes and I told him about my university where I am visiting and all of that thing very brief, briefly and quickly so uh, he said okay no problem please have a seat in the lobby I'm going to find out where you can find accommodation and it is a bit late in the in the evening so I will help you out there so I said all right I came to lobby um, sat there and I was thinking that you know I don't know if he's going to do what he will do and what he will not do I should maybe I'm wasting my time I should go out and look myself because um, the place obviously is not available in this hotel so I don't know what is going to happen but before I knew he uh, calls for me and um, he says that okay I've checked a uh, couple of places what is your budget and I share my budget with, with him and he said this is perfectly fine budget and uh, he says that okay this place is uh, has a room and uh, this is what they are charging you want me to book it for you uh, I said yes okay uh, I would have to look at the room also but uh, we can do the initial booking he called the hotel again and uh, asked them to uh, book a room and said that uh, no need for credit card or anything like that yet a customer just keep the room and customer is on his way and uh, he, will, he will do it himself and that hotel agreed and uh, the conversation did not stop there I thanked him for what he did and he did not have to do all of that of course uh, but then he asked he looked at me maybe I looked a little bit tired to him and I also had luggage uh, so he asked me how you are going to go there maybe it is not a good idea to just walk there uh, so let me call a cab for you and he called the cab 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 for me and uh, um, all of this thing was like uh, less than five minutes less than five minutes uh, 
and he was busy now we can you know talk about other things like you know maybe he had some uh, he would get some share from the taxi man or he would get some share from the other hotel but i checked and apparently nothing like that was obvious he and his body language and the way he was speaking all of those things um my uh, observation is that he was genuinely interested in helping me um, and i did not ask him for these things he wanted to do these things for me and uh, the way he uh, left me outside in my taxi um, um, all of that experience was exceptional exceptional uh, he genuinely cared uh, about my uh, well being or at least it his actions were showing that he was uh, um, a very very caring uh, customer rep no one knows what is in someone's heart but uh, this is what my experience was so uh, do i remember the name of that hotel no but will i forget this example i gave you very easily i don't think so this is something which will stay with me for many years and whenever i am talking about customer service example i say it or i don't say it it will just come in my mind it will come in my memory because of the things he did, did things he did were kind of a surprise for me a very pleasant surprise i was not expecting these things i have never seen this type of um, uh, relationship building mayors if i can call that from um, other places i have visited yes many examples i have where i had many good experiences in jamaica also exceptional uh, experiences many times uh, 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 and this is just one of one of those experiences just which is worth worth sharing so uh, i'm sure you also have had similar type of experiences not many maybe but every now and then uh you must have so try to analyze those experiences try to reflect on them and then see uh how they were able to do that or what was the mindset or what was the thinking behind giving you all of that customer service which is which is now uh, in your mind it is it is a, a story worth worthy uh customer experiences uh, um customer emotions of course and in this example which i gave you of course you can see that emotional relationship was able to be being built and trust was um, was there and it was built in a very short span of time it did not take long for that gentleman to build a relationship trustworthy relationship um, customer experience uh fail to realize the potential that exists to create long lasting customer relationship through delivering impressive customer experiences many times we are just uh, looking at the short run not the not the long run a uh, long lasting customer relationship we uh, we want to just close the deal right uh, as quickly as as possible we are thinking about our uh, profits many times Uh, but uh, uh, like uh, you know uh, a new customer rep, they would want to you know they would want to hurry in all these things, and they will get flustered if the sale is not made right away. But an experienced salesperson will never do that. Experienced and smart salesperson will never do that. He knows that even if customer does not do the sales right now, uh, there is a chance that they will return and come back. Uh, you never know uh, so if he spends uh, his energy on creating long lasting customer relationship then just to uh, ensure that this sale is done for which the customer is seeking some some help in the service uh, easy to do business with that is very important uh, attribute it sh- should see that it is easy to do business uh, with uh, for the customer second interaction with employees that is very important aspect and hr must be an active partner in the development of a customer relationship strategy uh, because at the end of the day it will be customer uh, customer reps the people who deal with the with the customer uh, 
in person or online or one on one whatever is the is the way uh, if those customers are not really on the same page uh, as you as a company want to give the service to your consumer your customer then it is not going to happen um, third the customer experience does not end when the customer makes the purchase there is a post sale experience and i spoke about it a, a while ago also so please reflect on those things customer experiences that they are, uh, can create or enhance uh, this is what the business needs to think uh, enhancement of the of the experiences what how we can please the customer uh, to the best of their requirements uh, customer engagement involving customers more in the production and delivery of products and service uh, we can create a higher level of commitment uh, if we can incorporate them involve them uh, when we are uh, planning how we will give the service take the feedback they have uh, maybe do some testing uh, show them the service if your customers and ask them how we can improve it uh, for you for example dell allows its customer to build their own laptops uh, what they want what they don't want what they want of more superior power uh, what they can just the basic which component they want just the basic all of that and other businesses also like you know amazon why amazon is such such a success because they are always looking for ease uh, of doing business from the side of uh, consumer customer uh, for example one click a one click shop so after a while once they have the your data and all of those things which are required uh, to make the purchase they give you then option that you can just one, make one click and make the purchase and we will deliver it to you you don't have to refill all the information again and again uh, so that is very interesting uh, very simple but very interesting uh, way uh, and engagement and involved engaged and involved customer is more likely to spread positive word of mouth to create communication for the business leading to a co-dependency that eventually becomes a solid genuine relationship so yes you are doing the things for the customer which we have been talking about yes but at the end of the day you will also benefit from from that because the customer if they are uh, they are happy with the with the service they are going to tell other people and uh, nothing is better than a word of mouth marketing when consumers are saying good things about your products your service uh, nothing can beat that customer relationship building should not be seen as the sole or even the principal responsibility of the marketing department in fact building customer loyalty must be accepted as the responsibility of every employee every employee yeah, so we have mentioned this thing again and again. Uh, so there must be it must be something which you want to reflect on and ensure uh, that when you are trying to give quality service management, it is not just you, your colleagues, your subordinates, uh, your superiors. Everyone is on the on the same page, uh, no matter who the person is or where do they fall in the uh, in the organization. That is that is very important lasting customer relationships and ultimately high levels of customer engagement result from the consistently effective delivery of customer experience the responsibility for which rests largely with the employees with whom customer uh, interacts it's a big responsibility uh, I want to share a little story with you um, uh, some years ago, I had a chance to go to some all-inclusive hotel uh, in Montego Bay. And uh, it was a very big hotel and it was my first time. So uh, I lost my way somehow. It was uh, time of evening and although there were instructions and uh, directions and everything, but somehow I lost my way. And uh, uh, there was a guy passing he was dressed as a mechanic he had his tools um, I trust he was uh, fixing he was someone who would fix things like like water pipes or drains or maybe electric something but it was mechanic type of type of job and uh, his tools and those type of things 
So I asked him uh, that I want to go here and I'm kind of lost. So what was I, I what was I expecting when I asked him? Uh, my expectation was that he will just direct me uh, uh, to the place. He will just give me direction that, OK, go that way or go that way or go there or go there, whatever. Yeah, so that is what I was expecting. And I was happy with that type of direction because uh, he would tell me the direction and I would start walking there and I would once I go there, I ask someone else and then eventually I will reach where I wanted to reach. Uh, it should not be that hard, but he did not give me the direction. He said that, OK, come, let me take you there. And uh, he was he seemed busy. He was the way he was walking. He was walking fast paced and it seemed that he had some place to go uh, for whatever he was. His jobs were his main jobs were so he started walking with me and I was not comfortable with every step because I was thinking that he could just direct me and I don't need that much of, 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 of help. Uh, I'm OK just with uh, pointing the direction and I will just uh, go there and he's busy also. And this is not even his job. He's a mechanic and stuff like that. All those things are in my mind and I'm not comfortable. And I told him that, you know, please just give me the way and I will just start walking towards uh, towards that direction but he said no I will take you there and he he's walking I'm walking we are talking a little bit uh, but of course I was not happy that I put him in in this this trouble uh, if you can call that <laughs> uh, and uh, eventually we uh, we reached to the place and uh, he literally takes me to the uh, to the to the door of the it is not that the place is a little bit far and he says okay you see that white door you can go there no he takes me close to the white door and he says okay here it is and uh, all of that experience uh, it really felt that i really felt that he genuinely cared that i should reach to the place uh, uh, very quickly and without any hassle, without any trouble, without any least amount of trouble. <laughs> and uh, he genuinely cared uh, in all of that. And of course, he could not, was not expecting or uh, thinking of taking any uh, tip or anything like that. That was not in his mind at all from his demeanor, from his body language, the way we were talking. The way he left was not in his mind at all, and he genuinely wanted to help. And he was a mechanic, so he's not, he's not someone who would really uh, have to help the customers in that way in finding directions. That is not, of course, his job, but still he did that. So what is that? That is what we are talking about every employee anyone who is working in the organization it does not matter so they think about the importance of human resource then how important is it to find the right person for the job and who is willing to serve the customers outside outside the scope of things also uh, because it is hospitality industry it is hotel so it is it is a possibility that someone can ask some person who is maybe a mechanic so the hr ensured that they hired the right person for so it should not be just the person who is good with his job as a mechanic but he should be good with people also so uh, that is very interesting uh, to have it is very interesting to have that type of experience please reflect on that MIT Sloan uh, Management Review, very interesting uh, magazine. Uh, please see if you can start reading these type of magazines, Journal of Academy of Marketing Research. Marketing and service, you know, many things are, you know, you would want to reflect in marketing. So this is a nice journal to look at. What separates the best customers from the merely satisfied? Very interesting Harvard Business Review read. Please uh, look into that. The New Science of Customer Emotions, again by Harvard Business Review, HBR. A journal of Service Research, uh, very interesting. Uh, I just highlighted the ones, you know, I, uh, I enjoyed reading or uh, scanning through. 
but you should look at all of them and see which ones you like and which ones you can uh, you would want to read marketing is dead uh, and loyalty killed it <laughs> very interesting very interesting so think about it customer loyalty uh, attitudinal loyalty behavioral loyalty emotional loyalty uh, when a customer is doing repeat business with you is it just because of the behavior or function or the customer is uh, genuinely uh, genuinely emotionally loyal to you uh, and that is where you want to land eventually uh, a discount airline with poor service standards for instance uh, might have customers who are behavioral loyal but not attitudinal loyal if its prices are significantly lower lower than those of other other airlines and we have seen these type of uh, experiences when we are booking our tickets and so on behavioral loyalty is similar if we are not emotionally loyal to the company behavioral law even if we are emotionally loyal it can be very tricky they they have to be really really uh, likable uh, for us the experience we get from there maybe it is extremely extraordinary uh, otherwise many times people are looking at uh, price and convenience and uh, so on uh, behavioral loyalty is similar to what can be described as functional loyalty in that there is no emotional content or sense of attachment sense of attachment to the company on the customer's part a sense of attachment is very interesting in any type of relationship uh, sense of attachment uh, uh, very important the more the sense of attachment the better the service would be uh, all other things being equal uh, how much you are attached to a to a to a service provider or or anything for that matter of fact attachment uh, like you you would not want to litter in your in your home in your house you would not want to do that because you want to keep it clean but maybe when you go on the road or or, or, or something like that you would throw away things which you might not throw in your in your in your home uh, what is that it is it is of course all of us love our country there is no second opinion on that or second thought on that uh, but this type of behavior shows that we are more attached to our home house than our country because the person who is really emotionally attached with their country and really love their country they would not want to uh, do that type of uh, behavior um, so something to reflect on uh, additional attitudinal uh, loyalty without behavioral loyalty has no financial benefit for the firm because it is uh, just attitudinal and not behavioral but behavioral loyalty without attitudinal loyalty is unsustainable like it's your behavior but your attitude is not showing that you are not like the frequency of getting the service is not as much so it would not be it would not be sustainable Customer A and customer B might have an equally loyal attitude towards a product, particular product. But what if customer A has never even consumed that product before, while customer B has consumed it regularly in the past? Yeah. So the person who has consumed it in the regularly consumed it in the past, they are giving some uh, some fees uh, to the service provider for that. Moreover, attitude and loyalty and brand preference seem to be redundant. Uh, so why introduce a separate term at all? However, defining loyalty in purely behavioral terms is equally unsatisfactory. Uh, monopolies have behavioral loyal customers. Uh, very interesting observations and questions to uh, really uh, think about. So for example, think about any monopoly uh, like JPS, are you, are you emotionally loyal to the company or it is just your behavioral behavior behavior are you a behavioral customer or emotionally loyal customer because there is no competition 
and the way they are maybe serving you and maybe you are not happy about that or water water uh, company um, how are you a behavioral loyal uh, behaviorally loyal cu customer or emotionally loyal customer so many times what happens in monopolies many times because of the way they give their services it is behavioral loyalty and not necessarily emotional loyalty some things you would want to reflect on and uh, think about um, loyalty programs uh, many uh, companies have loyalty co uh, programs customer programs they take give customers some forms or something like that get some information from that and then attract their buying behavior from the cards or whatever uh, and then maybe would want to you know give them some customized offer or something like that uh, but do those programs always create loyalty in the in the customer or uh, just uh, they are just like behavioral uh, type of buying pattern or service uh, enjoyment pattern they are going to show um, like you know grocery stores almost all of them have some type of loyalty program or customer service program which they offer to their consumers but for how are you you might have loyalty programs you have signed up for loyalty programs for all the competing grocery stores just because so one can get the benefits of signing up for those programs so again it is behavioral loyalty and not maybe emotional loyalty if if the loyalty program is not really uh, conducted properly and you can read the details and reflect on that and most importantly reflect on your experiences of signing up for those type of programs and so on most consumers are members of several different loyalty programs for competing firms simultaneously tesco the largest grocery retailer in the uk was the first major company to use a combination of technology and relationship strategy to execute a true loyalty program so it is uh, interesting if you can look into uh, the details of this loyalty program they have uh, shared some here but you can run some google searches and and know i was personally a customer of tesco when i was in uk for my studies uh, and uh, they i would agree that their service and the programs they had and all of those they were quite interesting and i was very happy from their uh, their services uh, during my stay few important best practices never waste an opportunity to gain insight about a customer um, all touch points uh, whenever the customer is interacting with the business in whatever mode in person or online or uh, whatever is the mode there is always an opportunity to gain some insight uh, never waste that type of opportunity especially if you if you want to create good customer relationship that will lead to good great experiences uh, you should be thinking uh, about uh, about about how you should uh, you can gain some type of uh, insight whenever uh, you are uh, whenever customer is experience any experiencing any type of touch point uh, with the with the company with the service provider and many other interesting uh, best practices you can you can read them and the examples are there uh, please spend some time and uh, reflect reflect on them of course summary section is is very is very important uh, in all the chapters look into that food for thought some questions are there um, you should reflect on them for example this one very interesting pick a brand that you will always buy you will always buy which brand is that what happened specifically to create this loyalty for you why this why that why that loyalty happened is there anything that could dissolve is there anything that could dissolve your loyalty or make it even stronger what could be that thing so let me share some example from my side so pick a brand that you will always buy well, there is a brand, uh, I always talk about it, I consume it all the time. It is not a good habit, but 
the brand is Pepsi. I am kind of addicted to their sodas, which is not a good habit. Uh, what happened specific, specifically to create this loyalty from, from you? Uh, it is kind of emotional loyalty. I would like to think that way. Uh, growing up, the, their marketing campaigns, the, my surroundings, my environment, uh, people I was hanging out with, the way they would talk about the brand, uh, the taste, of course, uh, uh, all of those things uh, and many, they created the loyalty uh, for me. Is there anything that could dissolve your loyalty or make it even stronger? Uh, in the past, every uh, every consumption was making the loyalty more stronger and stronger. But in the recent times, uh, uh, there are some things which I hope will dissolve this emotional loyalty although i i still enjoy pepsi but over a period of time i have learned that it is not a good uh, good thing to consume uh, these sodas and sugary drinks and all of that they are not good for us and i would like to enjoy a healthy lifestyle uh, so that type of thinking or information or motivation whatever it is although uh, the connection is still pretty strong with Pepsi, but that type of information may dissolve uh, the loyalty in in some in some time, uh, hopefully. So this is, for example, now you can reflect on these type of questions and go deep in these type of questions and see what are the things the company do to create emotional loyalty and uh, are there any any attributes which are transferable from industry to industry because services you about people people are people are people um, um, everyone likes when you uh, uh, when you do good things for 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 them so the same thing for the customer uh, you try to understand the customer you try to understand what they want from this product the money they are spending what they want from this service what experience they want to enjoy from that. Give them, try to give them that experience, whatever you have promised them. Uh, and then look at the competition also, what, how they are serving the customer. Look at the customer's past experience also. What are they used to, how they are used to uh, being treated. What is normal for them. And once you have uh, taken care of what you have promised, what the customer is expecting, what is the normal thing for the customer once you have satisfied them uh, very good good job but always try to do a little bit more always make uh, 13 uh, for a dozen uh, it was a businessman and uh, he told me once very successful businessman and uh, um, he said that uh, if your company, if there is a situation where if you do something X way and your company will face the loss, but if you do it in a Y way, your customer will get the loss. So if there is X and Y. So if you take the decision in X, X way, your company will lose. If you take the decision in Y way, your customer will bear the loss. Loss, he said. Always go for X. Always take the loss. Never try to give a loss to your customer, no matter what it is. Always take the loss. And of course, he's a very successful business businessman. And many times we see that that is not something which is practiced by many business business owners. Be it product, be it service. Many times they they transfer their loss to the to the customer and that is why when we have good customer service uh, we remember it and then we talk about it and uh, they are they are not everyone gives good customer service so if someone is giving good service, service, customer service, they benefit in the in the long run. Uh, so think about 
think about these things uh, nice terminology explained in the in this section look into that if something is not clear um, run some google searches on on it most importantly see that how the same topic is explained by uh, other professors uh, many clips are available online you just have to go on youtube and look for them uh, that is it i think for for this uh, the again the original uh, recording which we had in our uh, class uh, yesterday uh, by mistake uh, that was deleted so i i i did it over uh, of course, that recording was more detailed. We spent uh, in detail about uh, some topics, uh, but I have ensured that I mention the uh, the major ones, and then when you are reading the chapter, everything will be covered. So please ensure that you read the chapter in in detail. Um, thank you very much.